Hello, beautiful souls. This is Anu Grace. Uh, I have to do this video again because it didn't work out the first one, first time. So um, thank you all for for joining me. Uh, I wanted to answer a question, talk about um, Atlantis and whether Atlantis is fact or fiction. And uh, if you follow my work, you know I talk about Atlantis all the time. I, I, I my whole whole um, life purpose at this time is about um, awakening the crystalline goddess within the crystalline high vibrational being that uh, it lives in all of us. And, and if you're a man, the crystalline God energy. And uh, so that we can live that high vibrational uh, life style like the golden Atlanteans did. But is Atlantis real? Well, does it matter? <laughs> but anyway, today, because the point is, we're using the Atlantean wisdom, the legend, the inspiration from, from Atlantis and um, make, creating an incredible life. But let me actually get into some of the facts um, about and, and some of the things to make you think whether Atlantis really existed. Because I personally strongly believe that it actually physically existed, not just in our cellular memory and um, and in our, um, um, yeah, in our cellular memory and in our methods, of course, it, it still lives on strongly. But I personally believe Atlantis actually physically existed on this planet. And we do have, let me tell you, we do have some, <laughs> some type of evidence. We don't have a lot of um, science proved evidence, but, but let's see. Okay, so Wendy asked me a question, didn't they, or, or said, um, didn't they prove Plato made up Atlantis as an analogy? So that is one thing that a lot of people are are, are feeling that because um, uh, what we know about Atlantis historically is from Plato, uh, and Plato was um, um, Plato lived like four hundred years before uh, before Christ, and uh, he wrote uh, so many monologues uh, that we know, and in Timaeus and Critias. Plato talks in in great detail about about Atlantis. So Plato created a lot of different monologues. With all of them, were well, they were mostly really, really about sharing some some story, taking a story from real life that he witnessed or he had heard or studied, and he created it into a monologue that would teach people moral values or whatever like to to give a people a warning or or something that was what he did he didn't create fictional stories to create those moral um warnings or the, or, or that uh, education that he shared he used real life examples real examples so according to historians atlantis is the only story that he completely made up which does not make much sense to me, since Plato took his work very, very seriously. <laughs> he took his work very seriously, so I believe they, that what he's revealing us in Timaeus and Critias is um, he's showing us how he got the information. So, um, and it was passed on to him um, from his, you know, from his ancestor Solon, who lived. Uh, few hundred years before him. So Solon was a lawmaker in, uh, in ancient Greece, uh, very, um, a person in, in a very high, high power and um, influential person. So Solon traveled to Egypt and we historically we know Solon actually did go to Egypt in, in real life. We know that as a fact. And that is in, in, in Plato. Plato talks about Solon going to Egypt and talking to the priests in Egypt and getting this information about Atlantis. So the priests would share him the secret ancient. There was the civilization. It was, a, it was a, like a heaven on earth. It was utopian. People were thriving. There were plants from all over the planet. There were elephants. There were... They were um, wonderful things, and and uh, and it was just an amazing place to live. But the humanity got the upper hand, and and they got greedy, and they got uh, this and that, and the civilization fell. 
So Solon got this whole story about Atlantis, much of which we don't know because Plato did not finish his monologues. It's just ends in the middle of a sentence basically. So Solon brought this information back to Greece and that information and Solon supposedly was supposed to write a book about a monologue about his discovery but then he went back to Greece and there was just too much going on politically in the country so he focused on that and he never got to finish his story so his papers his documents are gone. We don't have those anymore. So we don't have Solon's proof. We only know that Plato has written that Solon got this information from, from um, uh, Egypt and it was that information was passed on uh, from Socrates to ben, eventually Plato because um, 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 supposedly Socrates uh, visited Plato's family uh, often and they had a lot of conversations when, when Plato was young, young man and so on. Anyway, so Plato had access to this information about Atlantis and he created this monologue which has an abundance of information about Atlantis. Okay. Whew. So, <laughs> Plato talked about uh, Atlantis being navigable by sea, and that elephants were abundant abundantly in the island of Atlantis. This happened twelve thousand years or or nine thousand years before before plato 's life before his life and at that time the information we, we, he, he would have uh, some information but um, we've gotten a lot of information about like the ice age and what happened on this planet uh, later so a lot of this information where would Plato have gotten it we don't know but he said there are there were elephants in in Atlantis and Plato described that Atlantis is beyond the pillars of Hercules, which means places it in the Atlantic Ocean. Fishermen of our modern day life has found a lot of elephant teeth and bones when they've been pulling up the nets um, in, in the Atlantic Ocean. And there's never, to our knowledge, there's never been this impossible. Why would there be elephant teeth there? <laughs> Why would that be there? Why would that be a thing? Well, that's also, Plato would not have known that there was actually anything there. He would not have that, that um, physical evidence, but we, we do now. Okay, that's a minor thing, but the, I think that's a, piques some curiosity about this. So then, uh, okay. 12,000 years ago on this planet, we had a, we know we had a cataclysmic event. And 12,000 years ago, it says that Atlantis fell. Atlantis civilization got destroyed. Plato said humanity got the upper hand. We basically exploded Atlantis. We created earthquakes. We created tsunami because the great crystal got blown up. And According to our, um, th what we know about the history of our planet, about 12,000 years ago, there was this cataclysmic, this polar shift kind of, Earth kind of moved in its axis even. It was something major happened. We don't know, meteor, whatever, something happened. At the exact same time that the legend says Atlantis blew up, <laughs> got the earthquake and the tsunami and all of that. And at that time, mammoths got frozen in, in an instant. So we found mammoths with, with still food processing in their, in their bellies because something major happened. There's a lot of uh, nano diamonds found in the coast of, um, in, around the coastal areas of Atlantic Ocean, which are uh, the nano diamonds are, are a sign of a great explosion. So we have that kind of physical evidence of that. But do we care? <laughs> do we really care about all this? Yes, we do care. We, I wish we could really prove Atlantis and I've been doing so much re of this research but I'm sharing with you and so much more than I'm writing in my book. But, but there's just so much of this information. If we come together and put two and two together, we will figure it out. But for now, um, 
in order for us to change history, change the history books, change people's beliefs. It's, a, it's not that easy. There are a lot of people who don't want to discover Atlantis because all our school books need to be rewritten. All our history books need to be rewritten. And a lot of religious um, groups um, don't want that kind of history for humans. They have a completely different point of view on how old Earth is. Some people believe Earth is only 2,000 years old. Or, or yeah, that, that's it. Or, or, or no more than 6,000. I don't know. There's many, many different beliefs. So it shakes when we finally realize, oh my gosh, Atlantis is actually real physical evidence of our human history. Wow, what a difference it's going to make, but it's also going to bring chaos. So archaeologists, scientists, they're not really historians. They're not really eager to just shake the boat just like that, even though there are many believers, even though there are a lot of evidence. But we just need something uh, the, the type of evidence to show up that will really be undeniable. And we don't have that yet. So fact or fiction, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know according to the popular uh, point of view. But what I, I feel, oh, one more thing I want to say. Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet, um, who did a lot of life readings in uh, 1930s and, and 20s and uh, around that time, he did a lot of life readings for people, medical readings, and often Atlantis showed up. And, and um, he, in one of his life readings, he said Atlantis will be revealed in 1967, 1968. Um, one of those years, he said Atlantis, we will, the earth, people will, will find, we will find Atlantis, a proof of Atlantis. Not necessarily proof. I think he said Atlantis will be revealed to us or something like that. Part of Atlantis will show up. I can't remember exactly his words. But um, so many years, decades after Edgar Cayce's death came the year 2000, I mean, 19, 1968, and Pilots were flying over. Oh, he said that Atlantis will be revealed in Bimini Island. Okay. He specifically said the location and when, year and location of when Atlantis will be revealed. So in that year, exact that year, what Edgar Casey had, had prophesied, um, pilots were flying over the Bimini Island and saw something very strange in, in, the, um, in the bottom of the sea. And there is this rock formation uh, that we called the Bimini Road, or we called it to Atlantis Road. So there's another little little thing to think about. But I want to say, I want to say, um, honestly, for me personally, even if Atlantis would simply be a myth, with all this evidence and more, if it's only a myth, I think it's the most valuable story and myth that we can have in this world because why it shows us it gives us the blueprint and how we can raise our vibration and how we can live in harmony with each other in oneness with each other and with with nature how we can have high technology without harming the earth how we can have all that we need without harming each other working together, cooperating. There will be no hunger. There will be, oh, no, nothing. Okay, that sounds very utopian, I know. But I believe that that type of society can work when we come to love, when we start caring about each other, and when we make our spiritual growth a high priority, highest priority, when we truly want to live in the in the frequency of light. And the Atlantans lived in the crystalline vibration, that crystalline energy. In another video I can talk about, I will talk about the um, um, 
um, the information I've gotten about Atlantis from the, the hundreds of past life regressions I've done. So most of the knowledge I know about Atlantis is not from Plato or Edgar Cayce. It's, it's from that um, decade of, of uh, past life regressions, taking people to Atlantis and, and um, regressing myself as well and being regressed and spontaneous memory. So past life memories is, has given me a lot of information about Atlantis. And, and uh, now it's just channeling. <laughs> now it's just coming, coming endlessly. But um, as a myth, Atlantis, even is, if it is a fiction, if you have a hard time believing that Atlantis is real, I think it's perfectly okay. You don't have to suddenly believe Atlantis is real. You have to believe angels are real. You don't have to believe anything is real. It's okay. But let it be an inspiration. Let it change your life. Let it show you how you can live, how you can be the best you can be, how you can live your best life and be truly happy living in amazing, amazing relationships. Because we can learn that from the Atlanteans because they lived a higher vibrational life. So we have, we have their model of what the energy of sacred unions are. And we can learn from Atlantis how to live in eternal abundance. Atlanteans had all that they needed, all that they could, could ever want and desire financially. So they didn't need money. <laughs> they didn't need money. They just had everything they wanted and needed. They had health. They lived hundreds of years. I know all this sounds strange, but just use that as an inspiration if you are not ready to bring that, embody it yet in the physical. It's okay. But I wanted to talk about this because this was a brilliant question. Thank you so much, Wendy, for asking uh, about um, in, in, um, bringing that to attention that, um, you know, Atlantis and, and uh, isn't it a fictional story? Didn't Plato make it a fictional story? I personally don't believe Plato made it a fictional story. Plato was very, um, he knew exactly what he was doing. Like, yes, he told the story of Atlantis. He probably would never have shared that information about Atlantis so that we can know it unless there was a crisis in Athens at that time. So thank God for a crisis in Athens, <laughs> 400 BC. because that's how we learned about Atlantis. That's how that memory survived in more than in just a, in ourselves. And a lot of cultures around the world have a common ancestor. They talk about this heaven on earth island that they originated from, like Aztec talk about this mythical Aslan and uh, Hopi Indians. This is everywhere in the world. We come back to the same mythical, legendary Atlantis. Okay, this was a little longer video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope um, I would love to hear your thoughts. So please do comment and uh, let me know uh, what you feel. And uh, if you have some evidence, if you have any ideas and thoughts that you would like to share, please do send me because I'm doing endless amount of research right now for my book. And, and I, I, I love to um, love to hear anything that I, I may have missed. So, so um, yeah, but if you, if you're interested in um, learning about uh, the ancient Atlantean manifesting uh manifesting tips or how how the Atlantis manifested um which I've learned from from like I said I've done hundreds of past life regressions and um learned so much from from the spirit about what was Atlantis was all about um so there's a free workshop that I'm I'm gifting you it, it you can download it free at freegoldengracecode.com so enjoy that and let me know, keep me posted. Let me know how you're feeling and uh, have a beautiful, beautiful day.